this video is meant for complete absolute beginners if it's your first time or you are, you are new to the aspect of bioinformatics uh, programming data science then this video series is going to be helpful for you but even for those ones who already have some basics the video series can also be helpful because it can help to patch some information that you are not recalling so well so you can still follow this video series where we will be diving into linux for bioinformatics and data science in general now why linux why is it uh, for people who are still beginners um linux is served or is distributed um, under the ubuntu in other words like you have things like windows now you you have ubuntu you have there are so many different operating systems so uh, linux is uh, literally a subsection for ubuntu let me call it that way so most of the things you will be doing you'll be uh, doing it over linux terminal in most cases and if you have ubuntu installed in your computer as its operating system then by default you will already be having a linux terminal with you like you already be having that terminal available so you can literally just begin using programming on linux so it therefore means that if you want to dive into the field of bioinformatics you will need to learn linux so you will need to have some form of ubuntu in some one way or another so what people do some people tend to change all of their operating system if their pc was using windows they then change it change it to ubuntu like completely and then and then they use it uh, some people want to do, use what you call the subsystem me personally i use a subsystem my computer is running in windows but if i want to run uh, ubuntu uh, linux here i have it available here so i have here a linux uh, subsection so it's there's ubuntu operating system so ubuntu if you see here this is ubuntu is the operating system then down here it's, it's named as linux so they go hand in hand together so ubuntu linux they go hand in hand together but my pc itself it has windows like i'm running windows so that's what you call um uh, a, a subsystem so me i'm running a linux subsystem in my windows pc so it allows me to, to still use my windows but also at the same time i can also be accessing uh, linux what some people also do some people also um download or install uh, ubuntu alongside windows so you find that if you power on your pc your pc has to decide which operating system it has to use so you can put two operating systems in your laptop or in your machine and during during logging in you can decide to use either the operating system ubuntu or you can decide to use windows that's just another alternative but that requires you to have good ram and good storage space in general hard disk and all that now if it's your first time then or if you're a beginner if you do not have ubuntu you can install ubuntu so you can just go to ubuntu.com then you look for a desktop version to download a desktop version from experience um you for you if you are going to install ubuntu for the first time you should be having a machine which is working in most cases you'll be having windows running so you can you you need to be having like windows because you need to access these browsers for you to download the 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 the, 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 the setup for ubuntu operating system so you go on this website download this using your windows and you can download the latest version um the latest as per today is uh 2.04 so uh you can download the latest version and then you install when you install you can then choose to delete windows then you only remain with ubuntu 
or you can have both operating systems working if that is going to be okay for you. Now, it is very pretty simple to, to follow. There is a, a whole of the step you can undergo to install your Ubuntu operating system. And if you happen to go on ubuntu.com and then you go to installing Ubuntu within Ubuntu desktop, there's an installation step and it is well lined, lined out. Uh, overview, download Ubuntu, create a bootable disk, boot from the USB flash disk and all this information is available. So just follow the step and uh, ensure you, you install it within your machine. What I just have to tell in advance is that, that preferably you should be having uh, uh, at least 25 GB of storage space because the, the different files for which the Ubuntu must run will be within that storage space. So, so you should, you should uh, have that in your in 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 storage space. But if you're having a flash drive, then you need about a 12 GB and above for it to, to run. Um, the, in terms of the RAM, the random access memory, you need about 4 GB. Per my experience, it's enough for it to run successfully. So that should get you going. Now, what if you do not want to remove your Windows? You can then install the, Win the, the Linux subsystem like how I did. What you do, you just come to the Ubuntu.com, look for the, the window subsystem. WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. So you look for whether it can fit your version, your window version. And again, it also has steps you can follow. PowerShell, PowerShell is, is, is available in, in everybody's uh, window. If you have Windows from Windows 10, I believe, you should, if you type PowerShell, uh, me, I have Windows 10. Uh, yes. PowerShell is, is, is available, run as administrator. So if you have Windows 10, you can even do, do this now. So just type PowerShell on your, on your start, start menu. You will find PowerShell in there. So the, the, the step tells you, just go PowerShell, run as administrator. That is from your Windows. And then you put this command, WSL space uh, dash dash install. This is window subsystem. Linux, something like 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 like, like the, the Linux subsystem, something like that. So, and uh, so let me see PowerShell. So me me, I already have it. I'm I'm not going to run these, but for you, if you want to uh, go through this tutorial, you can just install this. You have you need to have be having your internet connection on, because it will be pulling the setup from the servers from wherever it's located and it will be installed in your local machine. Again, it's free of charge. Uh, that's why Ubuntu is also very cool, it's, it's free of charge. So just follow this setup. So after installing, then you will need to download an app where your Ubuntu run. Because if you, if, if that, this is for the people who are running the subsystem. If you do the subsystem, it will, of course, in, in, install for you some sort of, uh, like what I was showing you in here. Okay. Some Linux section in here. But for you to then access it, because you have Windows running, it means that you have to have some sort of a software. So you need to install the Ubuntu app. And Ubuntu apps are again freely available within your apps, your app store, your Microsoft apps, um, App Store. So just go to your Microsoft App Store, search for Ubuntu. So go to your, just go into Start System. Uh, if you type Apps, it should be able to give you uh, app. Should be able to 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 give you um, an App Store. And if you this one Apps Microsoft App Store. If you open Microsoft App Store, you then search for Ubuntu. If you search for Ubuntu, they'll, they'll, it will give you so many possible apps that, that you can install. Each of these apps, if you install, it will automatically connect with the Ubuntu you installed, the, the subsystem you installed within your machine, and then you'll be able now to, to, to access. Now, me, I installed this latest version. This is the first one, it's here, installed. So just, just click uh, 
uh, download, install, it will install itself, and then yeah, and then it will be able to to remain integrated within your machine. How can you then access your Ubuntu? How can you begin doing programming, running basic commands in your Ubuntu? So this section we will talk about the basic commands that you can run within your Ubuntu. Uh, that is the Linux system. So it can be the Linux terminal, which is if you on a PC running on Ubuntu operating system, just type terminal. If you if you type terminal, it will be able to to bring for you a word like terminal. So that will be the terminal you you will be be using. If if you are using the subsystem, if you have installed the subsystem now, then I want you to to type uh, Ubuntu in most depending on on the soft uh, on the app you install. In most cases, it will be Ubuntu. So run. So right now we want to do the basic commands that you should learn if you're a beginner or when you're new into this field. If you see yourself going to explore data science, you're going to explore bioinformatics. I get to explore some of these intensive data 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 section then you will need to learn these basic commands these basic commands are useful in in very many ways and you will use it in a day to day basis so this video is about the basic commands that you will be using throughout your career for for data science and and i will be able to take you through telling you what each command does and we move from one to another now basically before i go further let us just just uh, understand uh, what we are having in here we're just generally you know, having a user okay the, the username there is is isaac and this environment is a base environment if you're a student you may have this as student if you're a student uh if if you are um, personal machine you may have this as root that there, there are so many ways that that this can can always change uh some of them will only be plain like it will it will not be having any any name at the beginning it will just be like let's say your machine the, the name of your machine some long name in there but but that's 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 just the, the machine names and you can do so many things in here let us do some system information generally let us just do some system information before we even go further uh how how what are the things you can do you can do date just type date in small letters if you type date in small letters and you press enter it will be able to give you the date the day and all that time and etc generally that that information so this video is being recorded on july 30th and that's it for 2023 basically so you can type that now and then see the information which is available there uh another command you can basic command you can try is cal cal that stands for calendar if you press enter you will be able to find it will display for you a calendar so today's calendar and it will indicate today's date and the month there and the year up on top so that is cal in that case so you can type that now you can also if you want to know the exact time you can also do up time um again some of these things you could have just seen from below your taskbar or something like that but these are just some basic commands that you can always do if you're doing this it's very exciting to have this black screen and you, you just type some few words and, and things display but you may not use them in a day-to-day -day basis but it is important just just know what you can do and you can be trying this now you can be trying this now like it doesn't matter you can be trying this basic command and you'll be able to see the display it's not it's not something hard it's, it's not magic uh you can also try w only w that tells you how many people are online do i have some users online this is only applicable if if let's say this machine you're, you're working on has very many users connected con connected to it would be able to show you but in this case there are zero users 
that like the, the, there are no other users apart from me so there's only one but if there were other people logged in you'd be able to see here so this is more applicable if you are looking into administrative you can be able to see how many people are logged in uh within uh, like connected to to that to that main or that admin machine so that's w but um if you want to know who are you logged in as like who are you are you logged in as like what is who are you generally does the machine know you which which login details are you using just type who am i in small letters who am i you type who am i it will give you the username the user account so the user account will be displayed in there if you type who am i in small letters so it is a basic command that you can be able to master and remember that now another uh, basic command you can learn is uh, you name you name if you do you name uh, it gives you the name of the terminal you are trying to use in there you name this is this 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 is linux you're using the, the linux machine which is part of the ubuntu distribution so it gives you that you can also do your name but you can also modify then you have your name a like to display all other details so it does not only give you that you're using linux machine now it also tells you that this is your username and it gives you all this other long info this is a, a window subsystem for linux so okay it gives you that other information it gives you so many other information that you can always find in there that is your name a so you can always be trying this even if you do not understand the, the main important thing is are you able to type something are you seeing some results is is, is anything displaying you should be able to to, to try that out uh, another command that you should be able to learn is man man command so uh okay 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 um okay if 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 i want to show the manual for the for a given command so if i want to show the manual for the given command let's say i do not know what who am i does you name does Carl does you can always get the manual by typing manual then you add that command now um let's go up here and we explain what was happening here now if you look at this this was an error okay i was trying to type in man command but this is not known there's nothing called command this one this i'm supposed to type put in the name for the command that i want to get the manual this man is an abbreviation for manual so i want the manual for some command now what command is that so i need to put here a command name all what we have been running here are commands you name who am i uptime all of them are commands so if i want to understand what that command does I could say man let me say carl in others i want to know what does carl do so it's here it says that carl or you can also type n carl it displays a calendar and date a calendar and date that is what we did the other time uh q let us do q here to quit so if i do carl the other time that's what it displayed. Displayed dates, the year, and all these other information in here. So um, I'm seeing here, Carl, I, even if I don't put this option, then I put minus J, Y, uh, month and year. What could that one mean? So let us try Carl, minus J, Y, july 2023 ah so it displays for me calendar to 2023 2023 from january for the whole year this i'm showing calendar for the january for the whole year 
Now, another basic command I want you to learn is uh, clear. Clear, C-L-E-R. What clear does is it removes and clears the screen, gives you an, like a free space. Like if you look at in here, this information has really gone up to down, but I want to have a free space. Just type clear in small letters, press enter. So clear is going to give you, remove all the other details which was where was appearing here, but it doesn't delete it. Of, of, of course, you can always be able to access it in later time, but it clears that space and then it gives you a free open space you can type in. Another command I want you to learn is PWD. It stands for Print Working Directory. So PWD, if you want to know which directory am I working in, where is my location within the machine, do PWD press enter it tells me that i am under home isaac that is where i am right now that is where i am working print working directory okay another command basic command is ls ls it lists the contents within the directory right now my directory is home under home i am within isaac so what are the components of under isaac I do ls. ls will display the components under Isaac. Now, all these are the information under Isaac in there. Yours may be in different colors than the rest. Me, I just, it is colored due to the settings that I, I performed. The question is again, this ls can be modified. You can be able to, to find out other information about these different the different items because from here you can't tell are they folders or oh, they are files you can't tell what are the size mm -hmm. you can't tell from here they have executable rights upon them okay which type of file is it is it executable is a normal file you can't tell from here so from you can modify this ls you can do ls minus l if you do ls minus l and then you press enter it will be giving you much more information about the files in there or about the folders in there we are going to explore later in later videos what each of them does but from here uh, basically d if if it starts with the d that stands for a directory if there's an error it means that 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 you can be able to read write and then run it you have the rights to, to, to do anything with, with, with that with that given folder directory same as a folder I, I could call it a folder let me call it a folder if you have this for example this file this is the file name here this this was the directory name because we, we have already seen that it is a d so that is a directory components under that directory yeah. file the user that the estimated file size in terms of kilobytes is that the the, the time that the, the month it was created and the date it was created and the time it is displayed there then the name let's look at this one if you look under d here it's it's minus meaning it's not there meaning this is not a directory it's not a it's not a folder, not a directory. R, you can read the contents in there. Right, you can modify the content in there. Executable, no, 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 it's not an executable file. It's not a program, so you cannot execute it. So that is that. So that is that component inside that file. This other one we will let explore in, in in details, but these are like the user rights. What can you do? Whereas that file has all these properties, but you as you, you have logged in, what can you do with that file? One component, this estimated size, date of creation, and all that. So that is what ls minus, uh, LS minus uh, uh, L can do. You can also do, do ls space minus A. It just display all the components within the directory, including the ones that were hidden. Because if you look at here, all the things we are not seeing, 
dot sudo dot s dot those are those are called hidden files if we did the time we did ls ls only began from here up to here those are the only items that it gave so some other files remains hidden but if you do ls minus a you're saying display all including the, the the hidden files so these are so many if you like like it's much more than what we had initially placed the other side okay let us clear our screen to give us more space another basic command that i want you to try is um, um let's see mk dir this one stands for make directory create a folder if you want to create a folder using the linux terminal you use mkdir but you need to give it a name so today let us give it a name uh, people uh, let me write in capital letters people so that is the directory no in fact let let's let let me change uh, let me call it linux lesson without any spell linux lesson if you tap enter it will have created do you want to prove whether it is there do ls small letters if you do ls small letters you should be able to look for and find uh, linux where is linux linux lesson is here linux lesson is there and if you want to check whether it is um uh a directory because you created a folder make directory create a folder i do ls minus l for example sorry uh you know the problem here ls i didn't put a minus l so that that command was wrong so ls minus l okay so i want to look for linux lesson where are you the linux lesson uh where are you where are you ah it's here if i look at it it begins with a d so that is a directory so that is how you create a directory now what if you want to be inside that directory remember if you do pwd print working directory as we already talked about it shows you the folder you're working with i'm working inside the folder isaac which is found under home but let's say i want to go inside the linux um I want to go inside the Linux lesson. So what you do, you do cd, cd, put a space, then type Linux lesson. Make sure it is the same word, and then you press enter. That one it will take you inside the Linux lesson. How do you know you are inside there? Just look at where you are first of all. Is, uh, then you have this inside Linux lesson. Initially, it had stopped in uh, Isaac. Right now, we have gone up to Linux lesson. That's when we have the dollar sign. After the dollar sign, that is where we have to write our commands. That's how you can tell. But you can also do PWD, print working directory in small letters. Here it tells you that you are under home, under Isaac, and you're inside Linux lesson. That is how you go inside a given directory. Let's say you want to come outside. You don't want to be inside. You want to back. If, if you're using Windows, you do back, 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 back. So uh, if, if, if you're in Windows and, and let's say you are in a given folder, let's say data analysis tutorial. I mean, data analysis tutorial. So I want to go back to D. Or I'm inside data analysis. I want to go back to data analysis tutorial. What would I do? I would just do back. Then I would come back here but so how do you do back and you go back in another lo lo location there you do cd space dot dot double dot cd space double dot will be able to take you to the previous directory if you tap enter it has gone back one step backwards that is it 
so i'm back in under isaac if i do print working directory i'm under isaac so you see that so you go in, in inside linux lesson you go inside linux lesson if you do pwd you under linux lesson here if you want to leave linux lesson want to go back to the previous do cd space double dot enter if i do print working directory now i am under home isaac there is no no linux lesson there so that is how you go back to your previous working directory but you can also modify this and then you go into as many directions as possible either backwards or you can go forward even cd backwards or forward but we are going to do that in later time this is just a basic concept that i want you to to learn the other basic command that i want you to learn is uh touch but for us to work on that i want us i want you to enter inside your newly created directory so that any changes you're going to make will be inside that folder so i want to cd linux lesson i want to cd linux lesson and you enter there's another trick i want I, I want to give you now it is a shortcut let us do cd space we will first go back to where we are if, if you want to enter inside linux lesson if it is the only name you have within your system then as you do cd space linux you can press tab tab will auto complete for you the the name it will auto complete for you the name me i have more than uh na more than one name that begins with the l because me i have linux lesson i have linux i have linux section so it cannot but if for you it's the only file you have which has something related to to line to begins with capital l it will just go it will just auto complete for you so i'm going to type cd linux Ah, in fact, this is already unique. Even even L capital I, because others they only share capital L. So if I do L capital I, it's really unique. So if I press tab, you see it auto completes for me. So you can just do CD. Then as you begin typing the name, just tap on tab. It will auto complete. Then you press enter. Then you are good to go. So you don't have to type if the name is long. There is no need of like typing that name each and every time so now we are inside the linux lesson so the question is how then can i create new files if you want to create new files use the command touch touch small letters space this is like creating a new file what do i want to touch what do i want to create let us give a name so let me give it file one. Now, you can also give it a file extension if you want, <clears throat> like a, a .doc, .xls, .txt. You can give it any file extension. But what is special with the with the Linux is that you don't necessarily have to give file extension because you can still open that file within the terminal, even if it has no extension file extension what it does is that it tells your machine that this file has to be opened by this particular program so for example if 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 you are back within your system you have things like this one it is a dot pdf so it tells you that if you open that file it will need it will be opened by a file which is a pdf reader so it that file will be opened by a pdf reader okay so that is what extension does so ex extensions can be in as many forms as possible it can be in the form of songs mp4 that's a video mp3 that's an audio so those are file extensions But under Linux, you don't necessarily have to give file extension. But for formality, let's give it an extension, txt. So you are creating a file. 
under the Linux lesson, and the name is file1.txt. If you press enter, it will it has created. Confirm if your file got created. Remember the command ls. That one lists the content under that folder. If you press enter, the file is there. All right. Is it real a file? You can do ls space minus l. It will give you that. Oh, okay. It's not there. It's a file because if it was a directory, it would be here a d but this is this is a normal file so we are all good there now how about if you want to open this file and let's say make some changes in them what would you do if you want to type something in this file you could do you're supposed to use a command nano now command nano liners tend to come hand in hand with what you call a text editor the same way you have like in windows you can have like txt texts if you install a new window uh wordpad will always come along with the windows that is its text editor something like that it's not until you now install microsoft office that's when you can have another editor so also in linux it comes with its editor and this editor is called nano so you want to specify that nano you want then you put the file name that you want to open in full. When you press enter, it will open a new window which is showing a free space. This is your file. Your file is this one here. It's, it's open, it's free. And below down here, there will be so many things that, that it asks you to do. Now, if you later want to write out, read file, exit, there are so many things that you can always do from here. But let us type something up there. Up here we can do something like uh, this. You can just just type anything. This is my first lesson. That's what I want to be inside that file, my text file. Then you have to save this then. So. Control O is save. Is he asking you, do you want to save that file like that? Yes, just tap enter. And you are good, or you, and then you can do Control X and then you're good to go. Let us go, go back there again. Nano file one dot txt. Remember, we saved it already. So inside our file, that is already there. Let's say you have you add some change again. If finding where to save and erase is disturbing you, you can always try to do Control X as if you're closing the text, and it will ask you, "Do you want to save the modified what what, what you modified?" Then you just type Y. This Y can always work with the either capital or small Y. It will always accept to save it. Then it will save the details. Then so that so that 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 is it generally. Now, how can you then view the content of that file? Now, how you can view the content by using a command called cut. Cut is a command that allows you view the content of a given file. If you do cut, you need to add the file name because you want to cut. What do you want to cut? What do you want to see? You add the file name. When you press enter, it will display for you the content inside that given file. That is it. Cut. So cut is how you are able to view the information which is inside a given file. So cut, cut does not only help you help to display the content of a given file, it can also be used to create new files just like touch. If I say I want to do create file number two, I would have done, let's say, file, file number two txt. It would be able to create for me that file. But you can use cut. But in this case, if you do cut, 
just ensure you space put return sign give a space again give it the name of the file i want file 2.txt press enter it will give you a space to begin writing information like it will be hanging this blink it will be blinking so you'll be feeding the information in here so i can say this is my second attempt this is my second attempt to do this so uh let's see ah so that is it but it, it keeps hanging you you could write as many other information as possible but it doesn't stop therefore you need to break this because now this is already a process running you have to break this by doing ctrl c so command ctrl c ctrl c will be able to break an operation now that i've broken it off let's confirm is file 2 there ls yes file 2 is available how about i cut inside file 2 so that i can see whether the components are there yes the components are there it has saved it successfully that is it now how can you delete a file in linux if you want to, to delete a file in linux let's say this is the folder you're working with i have file one and file two let's say you want to delete file one you are always deleting items the command you would use is rm rm is a command that removes components or items or files but the challenge is that it permanently remove that file or that item it's not like in windows that after deleting you can go and go in the recycle bin and then restore in this case if you do rm it permanently removes that file so you don't use it anyhow let's say i want to to remove or delete file one so do rm space then do file one dot txt press enter it has removed how do you know if i do ls there is no more file one it has already removed the other file one that you cannot even restore now how about if you want to delete a folder? Right now we are inside a folder called Linux Lesson. Okay, if you do pwd print, print working directory, this is where you are. This is where I am. For you, maybe in another location. But let's say there was another folder inside here and you wanted to delete. Now, deleting a folder is slightly different from deleting a file. So, Let's first create a folder. You remember the command mkdir, make directory. Let us create a folder. Uh, says you give it a name of your choice. It's me. That's my folder. You can also give it in, in small letters. It's okay. It has created. If you do ls, that folder is here. It's me is here. You can buy it with cd. Cd, remember the command cd? It allows you to enter inside a given folder a given directory so i can do cd space then i say it's me i'm inside there how do i know if you do pwd printing work print working directory it tells you that you are under lesson you're under it's me so the folder is there now if i want to delete this folder i cannot be inside this folder i need to go backwards so cd space double dot remember that command cd space double dot it allows you to go back one space by one so i want to come back to linux so that i have it's me available for me to delete so cd space double dot i've gone back if i do ls i can confirm that it's me is inside there alongside my file too that i initially created if you want to delete it's me folder you do rm now let us try rm let me say i add that name directory name what does it tell me no you cannot remove it's me that is a directory so rm only works for a file if you want to remove a directory you need to add something and you need to modify in this case you do rm minus r and then you can add it's me then it will accept the minus r in this case it, it tells you that remove this directory plus its components you could do um okay you could do man 
If you do man RM, which stands for manual for RM, it also RM removes, removes files or directories. But there are options. You can always add minus F, that stands for force. So it ignores any non existing files and arguments, so it's like it never forms it out. But if I come to minus R here, removes directories and their contents recursively. This is where it will allow you to remove a directory. You can also do, uh, okay, interactive, meaning if it's deleting one file to another inside a given folder, it will always be asking you, are you sure you want to delete? Do you want to delete this? Are you really sure? Okay. When you're in this menu, remember you can always tap Q and it will go off. So that is how you you'd delete a folder or remove a directory when you're using Linux system. How do you rename a file when you are on Linux? How do you rename a file? This, you are going to use it so many times. You, they may give you a first a file which has sequences and you may need to give it another name, maybe reference, you may need to rename. Sometimes files come with a very funny name. So how can you rename your file? It's a very basic command. Now, if I do ls, I know I have file two in here. But let's say I want to rename this file too. What you do, type the command mv, which stands for move, sort of, move. It has so many purposes, but mv can be used. So what I'm, we are moving file two.txt space. We want it to be called new file dot txt move what are you moving from file 2 dot txt to new file dot txt so it's more like renaming if you press enter it has renamed ls it has become new file dot txt you don't believe me let's do cut new file dot txt it is the same component under file 2 can you go back to the previous one if you want that name? Of course, you can always do MV. Since the new name is new file, you can then type new file, put the, the name you want, that is file2.txt. There you are. So if you do ls, there you have your file2.txt. So you can always move back and forth. That is renaming using the MV. But MV can also be used to like move, like cut and paste a file from one location to another that we shall explore in future videos how you do that you can literally move um the file to txt to totally a different directory that will be in another section then lastly in my opinion the other important a command you need to learn as a basic is wget. Wget is a command that allows you to download items from the internet. If you do manual, that is man wget, it will this it will tell the wget is the non-interactive network downloader. So if you have like you know like a link to a given file, a link to a given something you want you want you want to download, you can always do wget. And then you would put the, the, the link to it. Let us give it a try. Let us say I want to download um, this page, right? I want to download this particular page here. In Windows, what would you do? We just do Control, Control S, and then it will say for you this web, web page in here, for example. But let's say me, I want to download this, so I'll just do that, and then you would save. But let's say you want to use the terminal you just come here copy that link okay that is the link there then i will do come to my terminal let me first clear do wget paste in that link then press enter it is going to begin connecting to the internet but you need to be having internet for it for it to, to work and 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 and, and, and like be successful so if you go use internet, try to grab it and, and bring. Right now, I haven't done internet connection, so it's unable to resolve the, the, the address. But 
it is able to from you much is able to locate where is it where you try to connect internet and then that is it so that's how you'd be downloading information from the internet so that brings us to the end of this uh, video series for the introduction to linux for bioinformatician data science scientists or to anybody who want to learn programming in general welcome 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 more videos are coming make sure you like and share